afternoon, <laughs> that's how I get to my back. I climb up on the center console. I'm heading to Salt Lake City. I'm done with Kodachrome you saw in the previous episode. A storm is coming in, the clouds are coming in, it's cooled down a lot. And Salt Lake City will be a lot cooler <laughs> than down here in the canyon. But that was fantastic. Uh, fantastic day of uh, horse riding and checking out the sand dunes, but I will try to go back to the sand dunes. Although now I have a whole list from the horse trick people of a whole bunch of other places I can go in the area, especially Red Canyon. I'd love to go back and explore that on the way back to um, St. George. So my throat's a little bit globby. I, I think I'm fine. I don't think I'm sick. I don't have COVID. I'm fine with, I took a test and everything, so I'm fine with that. Um, but I'm just like, I don't know, I'm eating some gluten-free cookies, uh, Tate's cookies, which are actually really good. I'm not really a cookie person unless it's like an ice cream sandwich, but um, I just needed something to eat to get up there. I think I'd like to have some pizza tonight, actually, if I can find like a mod pizza or a really good sandwich or something. I think just something kind of to settle my belly. But yeah, I'm just um, feeling a little bit, I think I'm a com combination of tired, but also probably just being in all this dry, uh, this dry heat and all that sand. And then just, you know, all the hiking in the sand and everything, it's just really kind of done a number on my throat, but I think I'm fine. Um, worst case scenario, I can go to the VA up in Salt Lake City. Uh, I'm there till Monday morning, I think, or Sunday night. So yeah, so I'm just gonna back up out of here <laughs> um, and then just get back on the road. So it's only three and a half hours. It's four hours from Bryce. So three and a half hours and I should be up there. And then I'm gonna park up at the Cracker Barrel, but I'm also going to go take a shower, which I desperately need to do. I look very disheveled, even though my hair tends to get more, like, look more styled. No, it doesn't look like shit. <laughs> I look like shit, um, so I need a shower. So I'm gonna go get one at, um, at Planet Fitness, and then I need to call the Cracker Barrel, make sure I can stay there, um, which I should be able to. And plus it's like, like the Cracker Barrel is like Christian, so like everybody is welcome. We don't discriminate. We love everybody. We love all God's children, you know? There's a sign when you walk into Cracker Barrel that says like, everybody is welcome. And yes, you can park your RV. Plus I'm also in like Mormon country. So everyone's been super nice. Like I, who knew? <laughs> anyway, so now I'm heading up uh, on the 89, I think I'm on uh, north to uh, Salt Lake City. I think I connect to the 15 though. I don't think I take the 89 the whole way up. I have no idea either way. Uh, it's a really pretty drive. I'm heading into mountains that has snow and there's clouds that has like snow clouds and everything. So I'm glad that I'm getting back into some cold weather. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the next uh, leg of the trip. I do need to get back to Albuquerque. So I think what I'll do is come back on the 22nd, explore more of like kind of the Red Canyon Bryce area and then just hightail it to Albuquerque. There's really nothing between Page and well, there's Navajo Nation where you can do like Monument Valley and all that, which I've done. But there's really nothing else between Page and um, like uh, Albuquerque. <laughs> you just go through Gallup. There's, I mean, there's Window Rock, which I went to, which is the Navajo Nation uh, headquarters, which I definitely recommend. Check out their museum. I did a video on it. Uh, check out the thing about the code talkers from World War II and the Navajo uh, Trail. Uh, I hiked that as well. You can go to, you can hike it to Window Rock. Um, but that's really nice to stop at. And there's a few like other stuff in between like little things, but nothing big and epic like you have here. So I'll go to Albuquerque and then I'm gonna kind of backtrack to some of the places that the horse trek people at Kodachrome had mentioned down by like Almogordo, which has the largest pistachio nut in the world, which I've never been to. It's the kind of stuff I should be going to. That's, that's what I really look for is like the world's largest pecan or the world's largest pistachio or a water tower that looks like a watermelon. I mean, that, that's really my purpose of traveling, is not to do all this hiking shit. <laughs> so, no, but I go down to Almogordo, Almogordo, Almogordo um, and then down through Rio Duso, and then over through like central New Mexico, back to Arizona, or just kind of do it the other way, go Albuquerque to Phoenix, and then kind of make my way back. But at the end of that two weeks, I need to be back around May 3rd, I think. I need to be back in uh, Texas. Um, and then I'm home in Texas for two weeks, I think. And then actually, no, probably longer than that, through the end of, middle of uh, June. So I need to be home. So I just need to get the van back. Um, but yeah, so I've got one more flight next weekend and then just slowly driving back. But there's so much I wanna see, uh, even in you know central New Mexico and central Arizona that I haven't had a chance to do, but I think I've missed the window of cold weather. So unfortunately, 
that may not be a, uh, it might be a no-go for this year, even though the weather's been all over the place. It's been super hot this year. Last year it was super cold and we were snowing in San Diego and then had a ton of rain that was flooding and so much snow. And then this year it's just been really mild, but it's been colder in Texas than it was this time last year as well. So I don't know what's going on planet. I don't know if you just changed direction and now you're just rotating the other way. I have no idea. If you're flat, I mean, if you're one of those flat earthers, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, it's like this picture that says uh, this, th that was awkward. <laughs> so, or this is awkward. Anyway, okay, so I'm just going to keep driving another couple hours and uh, yeah, Salt Lake City. I've never been there before. Actually, no, I, I lie. I do tell a lie sometimes. Only when it comes to remembering locations in my van. Uh, I've never been in the, van, in the van, but in college, I was flying back from uh, Indianapolis through Chicago to Orange County, California, because I was living in California. My, my mom was living in Orange County. And uh, there was a woman on the plane that suddenly had like a panic attack or something and she needed oxygen. And then we had to land in Salt Lake City. This was back in the 90s on United, land in Salt Lake City because uh, they had to get another oxygen tank. So they couldn't get off um, the runway until we had another oxygen tank. Unfortunately, every oxygen tank available was on the planes that were taking off at the airport in Salt Lake City. So we had to sit there for like three hours and it was fun. I mean, people were singing, you know, this was before the internet where everyone had to be like plane ra rangers, <laughs> you know. And then United, United gave me a $300 credit um, for having to wait three hours. So thank you. And this is before United beat up people on the plane. But anyway, so um, yeah, my throat's a little... I need something, I need some soup or something. I'm gonna find a diner on the way to get some soup and a good piece of chunky bread. I think that would help. But anyway, yeah, so I've only been to Salt Lake City on a layover. I've never explored the, the city at all. And tomorrow I've got a whole bunch of stuff. If it's gonna rain or something, then I'll just do kind of like a little kind of tour of the museums and stuff and just kind of stretch my legs indoors, uh, kind of take a rest day. Uh, because then I have another long driving day on Sunday after Bonneville Salt Flats. I have a, about a four and a half hour drive back to St. George and then I'm in St. George for another day or so and then over into Vegas probably Tuesday morning. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry to get to Vegas uh, but I do need to be there um, Wednesday and Thursday. I have a lot of phone calls and Zoom calls and things that I have to do and then I fly out uh, Friday morning so I'll park my van again in the same place uh, that I parked before um, at the Hampton Inn. So yeah, I mean it's a easy, pretty easy week. I, you know, I did the wave. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> totally overrated and overhyped, but glad I got a permit. I did not get a permit for Half Dome, which is fine because it's going to be the middle of August. And although it was kind of cold last year when I was there, July 4th week, or a little bit, yeah, a little bit before July 4th, um, I will say that, um, actually no, I was there at the end of, the end of June I was there last year because July 4th was Seattle. Um, but I will say that, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm okay not doing half dome. I, I'm going to have a lot of stuff coming up in June that will kind of change the traje trajectory of my life, travel, family, that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping that things change in the good direction, um, which means that I'll be, you know, back home stationary for a couple months, which is fine because I need to work on the on the nonprofit. So everything is, you know, kind of going the way it's going, just kind of killing time <laughs> in the meantime, doing the travel and meeting all these people that I've been meeting and getting little post-it notes with phone numbers to connect with adventure companies. So when we start raising money for people like you, if you're watching and you're a disabled veteran or you have trauma and you want to try something like, you know, you want to do rock climbing or you want to go do an ATV hour in a, uh, you know, sand dune or something, that it's going to kind of be along the lines of like a make a wish where we'll be able to connect with organizations and also individuals that maybe they have a barrier that they just, they, they can't afford to do the activity or they don't know where to do the activity or they're intimidated and they're not sure the instructor will understand that they have PTSD and they don't want to be triggered. So the idea is we're kind of just gonna like create a happy, like get the storm of the ocean that somebody is in when they have trauma and kind of make it a calm little place, give you a sailboat and you get to enjoy the experience um, at the, expense of the uh, of the nonprofit so yeah so really gonna be spending the summer full-fledged getting you know getting donations going getting all that stuff uh, get to get you know getting all, it all together gotta get the website gotta get some merch send some business cards 
um, just really get going. So super excited. Ah, I'm so happy because I've been to all these places and I'm like, I'm solo traveler and I'm thinking, wow, I really think my friend who was a, you know, three term combat, combat vet in Iraq would really love to do something like this, but no, they're stuck in another state. They don't know how they can get there. Um, it's an, ex it's a luxury item to go do the stuff that I do most of the time. And a lot of people just, you know, they, they get stressed. They're like, I can't spend $300 for that experience in that hotel and the transport um, because that's $300 I'm taking away from food on the table of my family. Yet the family life is getting damaged because of the trauma and the, the relationship is going down the drain because of the trauma. And so in order to kind of balance the universe, providing them an opportunity to do activities without having the financial stress or having the... Um, the worry or causing strife at home on top of strife that already exists because of the trauma you know we just want to kind of make the world accessible in whatever way you need it whether it's a physical accessibility an emotional accessibility or a financial accessibility and uh, yeah so that's it so okay so I'm just gonna keep going I actually don't know if I'm going the right way so I'm not looking at my map my map is on the phone that I'm talking on so let me figure it out okay bye I'm going to make a quick stop at Butch Cassidy's boyhood home, and I've been here before. So this is where he grew up. Okay, let's take a quick look at Paul Newman's childhood home. <laughs> um, actually, I stayed in a um, renovated RV in Hotel Luna Mystica in Taos. And what was funny was that um, there was this picture on the wall of a very dapper looking Robert Redford and a very young Paul Newman from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And uh, I was like, this is my favorite place to stay in the world. Can I just take that picture, please? Anyway, okay, I've been here before. I stopped here a couple years ago um, when I was in the SUV, but here it is. And it's getting cold, a storm's coming in. There's a storm of brewing. I hope it snows. I need some snow on this leg of the trip. Guided tours, ATVs, and uranium specimens. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to pass on that one. You have no idea, that's Matt's off-road recovery. Oh my god, <laughs> that's a YouTube channel. No way. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> sorry. That is hilarious. I watched that channel, not because I think I'm going to break down, but because I think it's hilarious. So. That's awesome! My first influencer that I've seen on the road in 100,000 miles. Good evening! I have made it to Salt Lake City and it's uh, 81 degrees. <laughs> Why is it hot here? I thought it'd be colder. Anyway, there's the downtown Salt Lake City. Uh, this is where they had the Olympics. Um, this is where they still have ski resorts open. And I have not been in a big city since I was in Vegas last week. But Vegas really doesn't count because only the Strip is like the big city. and the rest of it just looks like Albuquerque. Anyway, so I am now going to Planet Fitness, go take a shower, and then I'm gonna park up at Cracker Barrel, um, and then that's it. That's kind of kind of gonna be my evening. I need to uh, just kind of do my map for tomorrow to figure out where I wanna go and what I wanna do. So yeah, this is, uh, this is Salt Lake City, so welcome. <laughs> Not a lot going on here. Um, I did see this, I saw this container, like, container park. I want to own like a dumpster house one day or like a container home, like a really cool one. Like in my retirement, I want to build a container home in Santa Fe, New Mexico on my own land. Like that's my goal in my life, like 20 years from now. Um, but this whole like container, like strip mall thing and there's a tattoo parlor. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's go get a tattoo and a, a tetanus shot <laughs> as well. Cause you'll probably need one. Anyway, uh, I don't actually have any tattoos. I don't even have my ears pierced. I don't like anything on my ears. I don't even like headphones. And I, I do not like my hearing test done. I just, I don't like anything. Even in the army, I couldn't, I couldn't wear uh, earplugs because I just, I, it just tickles. I, I'm very, 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 very ticklish, just to let you know. And that is not something that is a good, fun thing for you to try. <laughs> I hate being tickled. My feet are ticklish. I will, literally fly off of the chair that I'm sitting in, hit the ceiling and roll out the door if someone tickles me. I do not like it. It is painful. And 
and uh, it's quite funny to watch. I mean, it's entertaining watching me freak out when I get tickled, but I don't like it. It's not cute. It's not something, you know, my significant other, you know, if I had one, could do to me. <laughs> like, I, I don't enjoy it, so just let you know. But, what is this person doing? Okay, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to turn left. Um, but anyway, so, <laughs> there's, there's some guy on the, okay, I'm in, I'm in Salt Lake City, right? Which is like, you know, like LDS. And the guy on the street corner is not begging, he's just holding up a Bible. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Back to tickling. Um, I hate it, and it's not fun, and if you tickle me, you will not be my friend anymore. It's, it's a, to me, it's basically assault. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like it at all. It's horrible. And, um, but that said, I don't even have my ears pierced. I do not like anything on my ears. I don't like it. I, I'm fine with needles if I have to do, like, you know, shots or blood work and stuff, but I've never had tattoo. I respect the art. I mean, I have a lot of friends. I worked in digital media, entertainment, all that stuff. I respect the art, but I do not have any desire to ever have tattoo. So anyway, so let me go through here and try to find Planet Fitness. I'm in like downtown Salt Lake City right now. And so there's a couple Planet Fit and I. <laughs> I don't know what the um, plural of fitness is. I think it's just fitnesses. Anyway, there's a couple Planet Fitnesses around here. Um, and they also have Metro. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna hopefully build a park. I hope it's not in, oh, there it is. Oh, okay, cool. There's Planet Fitness. All right, so now I've got to hope there's outdoor parking. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna work out. This actually looks really nice. And I'm not actually working out. I'm just gonna go take a shower. <laughs> so I'm gonna go do that across the street right over there. There's two Cracker Barrels in Salt Lake City and the one that's on like West Avenue or something, you cannot park there overnight. But the one that is uh, here in um, 200 East, which is Rosa Parks Boulevard and University Boulevard. And I just came down MLK. Um, so I think this is just a university area. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of homeless people and college kids. So I have no idea what neighborhood I'm in. The city library is right there. Um, but anyway, so this one, this Cracker Barrel over here allows you to sleep overnight, but the other one doesn't. And I don't know why the other one doesn't. Um, but it should be fine. I mean, there'll be other RVs there and security and all that. So I'm not ever worried about staying at a, uh, worried about staying at a planet at a uh, Cracker Barrel. I just need my sleep. So, okay, that said, let me go in here. Welcome to city center. Is it paid parking? It's paid parking. I should not be paying to go to uh, public parking, customer validation, public parking. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just gonna park here. <laughs> I don't know, I haven't been in a city. I've been on public land for, oh, there's a, there's a van lifer. Okay, I'm good. I was gonna say, I've been on public land for, forever so let me park here this is not a good parking spot that's a better parking spot okay I'm gonna back up I'm gonna park where that car was now this is why just to let you know this is why I have the Nissan NV is because it's only uh, like 72 inches wide and it fits in a regular parking space so that's why I can park in a compact space right here and of course people scream at me oh there's a better one over here people scream at me and go oh my god like your van's too big I'm like no nope, my van is a compact van people so I'm actually gonna park, I should park next to the van down here. Okay, here's a van right here. So I'm gonna park next to him. And I'm gonna park down here. I've got, oh, I've got the bike rack, which means I can back up, but I can't, uh, I can't back up too far. Anyway, so yes, uh, vans should stick together, you know, safety in numbers, anyway. Okay, so yeah, then I have to do my stealth move of walking into Planet Fitness, beeline to the, uh, you know, with my bag and everything, make it look like I'm gonna put my stuff in the locker and then just go, go take a shower. Okay, I really need to take a shower. Oh my God, okay, I will see you when I'm done with the shower. No, you do, you do not get to come with me, you can go away. Okay, this is me not showering for like two days. <laughs> so, I'm a little congested for some reason. Um, yeah, I'm like having, I have like the really low voice. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna go take a shower at Planet Fitness, which is right here, and I have to pay for parking. I'm like, I don't pay for shit when I do van life. How dare they? <laughs> I've been on public land for a week. I shouldn't pay for anything, but I'm in a city and it's 81 degrees. I thought it'd be colder up here because I thought, oh, they have ski resorts. No, it's hotter <laughs> and it's the city, so it's congested. Uh, I'm a little congested too because I've been hiking in um, the sand and the desert and nature 
for like three days. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go take a shower at Planet Fitness and then I'm going to go park at Cracker Barrel because that's how classy I am. All right, the Planet Fitness is right across from City Hall. So uh, I had the Springville Cracker Barrel. That's what the other one told me I could stay at, but that's an hour away. I already passed it. So there's another one 23 minutes up the road and they, uh, they allow overnight parking in the back. So that's much better and it's closer to Bonneville Salt Flat. So let me go in here. I saw uh, another van lifer, female van lifer, left her pee bottle on the uh, parking lot. And then there's another van lifer here. And then there's this guy with his lifted truck, which is actually bigger than my van. <laughs> it's like, how obnoxious do you have to be? Okay, let me go in. There's me. Okay, let me go take a shower. So as luck would have it, there was no hot water at that Planet Fitness and the girl was kind of rude. And I felt like I wanted to say something to her, like, never mind, <laughs> not anything mean, but just like kind of put her in her place. Like, ma'am, this is a no judgment zone. Like you cannot expect someone to take a freezing cold shower. It's like glacier water. Uh, I don't mind doing polar plunges, wild swimming, all that stuff. But today I would like a nice hot shower to do something with this. So now I am going to the Planet Fitness up in this much nicer neighborhood that's actually one block away from the, um, uh, what is it? One block away from the Cracker Barrel. So it's up here somewhere. Oh, this is so much better. Now, where is it? I think I passed it. Yeah, this is so much nicer. The other one was right across from City Hall and I'm like, okay, never mind. There's supermarkets up here. There's kids hanging out, all cool, like hanging out, going to ice cream shop. Yeah, I wasn't that cool. All right, thank you, Planet Fitness. There's Prudence. It is now cold, cloudy, and windy, and nighttime. So it's 8.30. I'm gonna go to the Thai restaurant just down the street, get uh, some pad thai um, and a yellow curry. So I'll probably eat a little bit of the pad thai. I'll have the rest tomorrow. I can warm it up in my little jet boil thing. And then I have uh, some yellow curry because I need something soupy. <laughs> and I don't, the corner bakery is closed. There's no soup there. And I don't feel like getting soup from the supermarket, even though it has the word soup in it because it's a supermarket. Get it? <laughs> I'll shut up, Jenny. <laughs> Sorry, my stand up comedian job. Yeah, that didn't pan out too well. Anyway, okay, I'm minty fresh. So definitely come up here. And then I'm going to stay at the Layton, Utah Cracker Barrel, which is about 15 minutes north of here. And then I am crashing. And tomorrow I need to uh, plan tonight on the computer uh, the little map of what I'm going to do tomorrow. But I'd like to go to a couple museums. I'm going to wake up late. <laughs> I'm going to sleep in, go to a couple museums, and then come back up here uh, to the Cracker Barrel again, take another shower up here, and then uh, go to Bonneville Salt Flats uh, Sunday morning. So that's the plan. This is so nice. Actually, it was like super hectic downtown Salt, Salt Lake City. It was so sketch. And then I come up here and it's like Peacefulville. So come up here, wherever I am, north, uh, <laughs> I don't know where the hell I am, north Salt Lake City. It's just like your average neighborhood. And it's not like chaotic with, you know, politicians and crap. So, okay, thank you, Planet Fitness. I will be back tomorrow. Again, take advantage of it. Um, and that's it. So, okay, let me go get my Thai food. So there's Planet Fitness. Focus. Anyway. There's Planet Fitness and across the street is uh, Thai in town. So we're gonna try this place. Hopefully this will be good. I can get it tomorrow night too. We'll never pass up Thai food. Okay, I am back at Cracker Barrel, the saltine bucket. Let's do a quick sound check. Why am I losing my voice? <laughs> because all I do is talk. Um, okay, let's do a quick sound check on the generators, no generators. We have two RVs, we've got a van lifer. So I think it was the same one I saw earlier that left the pee bucket. This guy, and I think I'm gonna park at the end, but I don't think, okay. So that's a bus. I don't think anyone's staying in the bus. So I'm just gonna park back here. I think that's fine. And nobody else should be parking. 